coming into the week, I was staunchly QB at three. I didn't want to hear anything about Marvin Harrison. I didn't want to hear anything about Joe Alt. I didn't want to hear anything about trading down. Quarterback at three. I am still of that belief that if you believe in the guy and the reporting out of the combine made it sound like whoever falls, Mayor Daniels, the Patriots have belief in both of those guys, that you take the quarterback and you go from there because it's a rare chance. But if they're truly going for, we need to build a foundation up from the bottom, from the draft, I do think there's a stronger argument now, especially after the Minnesota trade yesterday, to trade down, acquire future assets, build the rest of the roster up. Don't futz around with the quarterback at 34, 68. Truly build the roster up, and then you have all those future assets next year. You hope, because that's what you're doing, you're hoping. It's not guaranteed. You hope there's an opportunity to move up for a quarterback. Listen, this is something I completely uh, hate myself for. I I hate the idea that trading down uh, is something I even entertain. That's how how much I'm anti-trading down. Um, However, it's all about the quarterback. And, you know, I was telling you off air, I was was out last night and had literally – a dozen people just randomly come up to me. Like, Who are we taking? And and I had the same answer from all. It, it's it's all about May and Daniels. It, it, you know, the whichever one that they're going to have the opportunity to draft, are they convicted in his ability to be their their guy? If that is the case, I'm back to square one with you. Yeah, uh, I think Mike Reese used the term. You know, run that card up to the, yeah. you know, the the in the draft room and make sure that you get your guy and get started on developing your new quarterback. If that's not the case, I don't want any part of staying at three to take Marvin Harrison Jr. or Joe Alt or whoever. Right. Trade down, stockpile picks, and then take whatever you think is the best guy out of the receiver or tackle that's available, um, however far down you end up moving. But it all starts with how much you like May or Daniels. The way I have put it is if the Patriots believe – We'll use Drake May because the noise now makes it sound like Jane Daniels is going to go second overall. So, yep. But you can sub Daniels into this conversation. It still works. If the Patriots are sitting there saying, Drake May one day will ride a duck boat through the streets of Boston. We have a plan we can put in place with what's at our disposal that this guy's going to win a Super Bowl. Is anything worth giving up, giving that up? Is anything worth passing on that? No. So I think you have to make the move. Now, if they're sitting there saying, well, yeah, we could get there with Drake May, but having these extra picks would really help, then you don't really believe in him. Then don't take him. But if you believe your future franchise Super Bowl winning quarterback is on the board, you can't you can't pass. Yeah. You can't pass. And people talk about, you know, teams trading down in the past. A lot of those teams had some semblance of a quarterback plan. The Patriots, they just don't. They don't right now. They don't. Bailey Zappi is not a semblance of a quarterback plan. I don't think I, uh, Jacoby Brissett isn't. I think people know that. I don't think people are as aware of that with Bailey Zappi as maybe they should be. If the guy's there, you take him. If not, yeah, trading down now becomes a really attractive option. But I, I, the Minnesota one still, I don't love it. Falling out of the top 10, that's such a far drop. That's such a far drop. I look at the Giants at six. Like Minnesota better pay through the nose if you're going down to 11. And, the Patriots should make them. If I'm the Patriots, that that call goes, all right, you're going to give us three first-round picks and what? And what? And if they say they're not giving you three first-round picks, I hang up the phone. Yeah, I mean, you're talking about switching spots and adding two other first-round picks. Right. So right? I, okay, yeah. I, look yeah at, I, no, I totally agree. I look at that I totally Niners agree. trade from 21, right, where they moved up for Trey Lance, and it was three. It was the first that year, two future firsts and a third. If the Patriots want to yeah. you know, push their chips in a little more and do – the two firsts this year and a future first, sure, fine. You're still getting the value of three first round picks, and what? And I don't think you're getting Justin Jefferson, but can you get a second round pick? Can you get a future second round pick? Well, you, you don't get... want the you don't you don't want two two ones and Justin Jefferson. That's oh, I would I would take that. But yeah, yeah, I, the Vikings, I, I would too. They're they're complete idiots. If the best thing you can do for your young quarterback is Justin Jefferson, so they're yeah. complete. Look at what the Panthers did trading DJ Moore. So like within the realm of uh, of reality. Three first-round picks and what to move down to 11? If you're moving down at six with the Giants, it's probably, all right, a first, a second, and a future first, and you're done. But Minnesota, I want a lot more than that. Yeah, and the Vikings trade that they made um, over the weekend, too, that's that's an interesting move. And, 
you know, you start to try to identify, you know, what is it for? What, you know, what's the, what's the guy they have their eye on and where are they trying to move to? Um, you know, you've seen some stuff with the Chargers. Right. You know, are they trying to get there? And they're looking for J.J. McCarthy with Kevin O'Connell. You know, I don't know. There's a lot of ifs. But that's what makes that part of it fun. You know, like yeah. trying to wheel and deal and figure out what, what goes into these uh, all these different trades. I think the Patriots would strongly consider it. And I, and I don't – it's not just because of the Minnesota thing. It's because of how they feel about Drake May. And I don't – we don't – none of us has the answer to that. All right, Paul, we were saying during the break, we were surprised we weren't getting any calls. Here we go. You start talking about the draft, the people call it. You, you people make fun of me for being the draft nerd. Anytime you talk about the draft. Well, I do. People I don't call know, it. I don't know what everybody else does. I make A lot fun of people of you. do. A lot, but people do. want to talk draft, including Jason and Taunton. Good morning, Jason. How are you doing? I was calling to suggest, uh, well, if they Patriots think that next year's quarterback class is going to be better than this year's quarterback class, then they should pass on the quarterback. If they think this year's quarterback class is better, then they should draft one, play Jacoby, and then re- keep building their draft through draft picks and have good picks next year. That's- Thanks for the call, Jason. Yeah, I so think that kind of sums it all up. Those draft are- the better quarterback and then draft other good players. Right. This plan. right. I like that. I think that's the plan. Absolutely. I would say next year's quarterback class, you, you never know year to year. with so You being so- snarky to the callers, Alex, that's why people make fun of you. All right, fair enough. <laughs> that's my uh no because ne- i never do that <laughs> Sca- s- next year's court you never know with the next year quarterback class for all you know we're in the, the the 2022 class was supposed to be decent and then you got kenny pickett and desmond ritter so well and you never know with next year i mean every year like right now it doesn't look like a great class right. we've had the countless examples of guys that come out of nowhere like daniels did this year daniels I, was not I considered a first round pick in in september you 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 usually – you do get those risers. The the risers are more rare than the fallers. Oh, yeah. And generally as a whole, the board drops from the start of the season on. It doesn't move up. Like, because this year, right, for instance, you lost – Quinn Ewers was supposed to be a first-round pick. You lost him. K.J. Jefferson was supposed to be a top-50 pick. You lost him from the class. Uh, Shadur, obviously, right, went back to school. Guys go back to school. Guys fall off. They have bad seasons. It's a dangerous, dangerous game betting on next year's draft class. Let's take one more call. Andy and Sudbury on the draft. Andy. Hey, Alex. How are you today? Hey, Andy. So I am, um, I, I hate to say, I don't agree with you guys on the whole Marvin Harrison jr. Thing. If he's there at three, I think you take him. I mean, he's a guaranteed prospect. I, well, not a guaranteed prospect. I shouldn't say that, yeah. but I think I, you know, he's an excellent prospect, and I think you trade up from your top of three pick into the bottom half of one and take either Spencer Rattler or Michael Penix because I've heard several knocks on, you know, Drake May's comp is Mitch Trubisky or, you know, Jaden Daniels can't play in the weather here. Granted, I would, I could I could think of going Daniels if you stay at three, though. So let me know what you guys think. Thanks, Andy. I would not. Spencer Rattler at the end of the first is very rich. And if we're going off player comps, uh, the comp for him for me is Gardner Minshew. So. Oh, Spencer Rattler. You're yeah. About. Yeah. Uh, so. Yeah, a little small. Um, Minshew is definitely I would the smaller s- side. On Harrison. I think Patriots fans, after years of missing on wide receivers, see a chance to draft the best wide receiver prospect in a decade, and I get why people are excited about him. I also feel like people are forgetting that there are, in fact, other receivers in the draft, and he's not – this isn't the last train out of the station. He's not the last wide receiver who will ever be drafted in the NFL. There's some really good wide receivers in this year's class. There's some really good wide receivers in next year's class and future classes for wide receiver. Much easier to project. Is Harrison a tremendous player? Yes. Is he the only chance you have to get a tremendous wide receiver? No. If you can develop these guys, that's the thing, because people just assume the Patriots won't develop whoever they draft because that's been the case. you got to kind of bank on them, too, and expect them to I, a little and bit. I, listen, I, I love Marvin Harrison Jr. I think he's a really good player. Right. But I, I just I, I get kind of nervous when I hear people say he's the can't-miss guy. And I know I'm not picking on Andy. Right. He, he corrected himself right away. But I, I just think there's a – there's an aura around this guy as if he is a generational prospect at wide receiver. And I just don't think that's true. And it's not because of what I think of Harrison. It's because I've heard guys that I respect 
have differing opinions on who the best wide receiver in this class is. Right. Most think it's Harrison. I've heard some talk about neighbors. I even heard one guy talk about Adunze. So when Andrew Luck was coming out of the draft, Alex, yeah. there was nobody that thought that there was another quarterback that was better than Andrew Luck. That's a generational prospect. There aren't many of them. Um, Jamar Chase came out of the draft three years ago. Yeah. And was considered like, you know, like, so it's not that rare. Like, I, I don't think Harrison is a rare prospect, I guess is what I'm saying. He is a terrific player. I think any team would be lucky to have him. I, I think if you can't get him and you get neighbors, I think you're going to be happy with him too. To your point, we're going to get upwards of what? 15 guys? Yeah. In the first couple of rounds, first three rounds. Uh, like, there, there's multiple. And that's the way it goes every year now. The wide receiver class is ridiculously deep. These guys are all playing in these wide open systems. They all come into the league with much more sort of production than when I was a kid. And I was watching the draft, and these guys were right. such projects um, to try to figure out. Now, the the ones that are truly different are the ones that have the size, speed, and route running combination. Um, because so much of the college game is screens and go routes. You know, right. there, there are some guys that have a little bit more nuance to their game. And I certainly would say that Harrison is, is really good. And you know, the pedigree and stuff counts. Yeah. Terrific player. I just, I don't think you have to take that guy at three when you can get a comparable player later on. And there's very little evidence you can successfully start a rebuild with a wide receiver. Right. So like, I just and I go back to Garrett Wilson all the time, who I absolutely love. Right. I but love, he's going to be running open him. down the field. No, the ball's not going to be anywhere near. And, him, so. and he's been very good for the Jets. Like it's not like he's a bust. Like right. you identified a top ten talent at wide receiver. You were right, and it's helped you not a lick because you don't have the situation. So, uh, uh, you know. Addressed. It's been funny though. If you listen to Felger and Maz over the last like week, week and a half, as everybody <laughs> catches up to the draft, every it wants a segment. Yeah, Felga, what about Marvin Harrison at three? And then you take Penix at thirty-four. Like everybody's calling in, like they just thought of this. Yeah. And Felger's now catching on to it and he's like take losing the, his mind as he's want to do. It's but. it's. I, I would say I, I can tell they're frustrated. I don't blame them. I've been dealing with that since like September. Oh yeah, so I feel you. Like uh, I don't know if you heard this one. Well, at least at least this this recent caller changed the the script a little bit. Changed it up with Rattler with Rattler, yeah. Who I like, but and the first round's a little rich for me. 